Welcome to Mikon's Hardware. Today I have tested yet another Chinese X99 motherboard for you. And in this case I have a machinist or not really machinist X99 XD4. The motherboard looks like this and it is a really decent package in micro ATX format. I bought it for less than 50 euros and for this money you get quite a bunch. I have paid for my motherboard a bit less than 50 euros, but the prices may fluctuate between 45 and 55 euros. Over 55 euros I would say it's a bit overpriced, but in this price range it's a very good deal. So let's start with the basic specification. The motherboard comes with Intel C612 or X99 chipset, quad channel memory configuration, PC Express X16 and PC Express X4 slots, in addition to PC Express X1 that is connected to the chipset. Then we also have two M.2 slots for PC Express and VMe SSD drives, and one of the slots can work in SATA configuration with manual jumper switches. On top of that we have an M.2 slot for Wi-Fi Bluetooth adapters, 6 SATA ports, a bunch of USB ports 3.0 and 2.0, and we have a fully functional TPM 2.0 header that accepts MSI 14-pin LPC TPM 2.0 modules. For the fans we have two 4-pin PWM fan headers, and those fan headers can be individually adjusted and controlled through the smart fan function in the BIOS. We also have a couple of 3-pin fan headers, but just like with any other Chinese motherboard, 3-pin fans and 3-pin fan headers do not have any adjustability. These fans will work at 100% speed. On paper the specification sounds pretty decent, and in reality most of the stuff actually works. It's easier to mention what doesn't work, but I will still quickly go through what actually works. Quad channel memory works, PC Express X16 and X4 slot work, M.2 slot also work, M.2 Wi-Fi slot also works, USB ports, SATA ports, smartphone, this function also work. Resizable bar, PC Express buffer cation and restore on power loss functions also work with no issues. In addition to all of that and much to my surprise it is also possible to overclock unlocked CPUs using X99 XD4 motherboard. All you have to do is to apply a simple BIOS tweak and then overclocking is possible. There is a very nice video tutorial on how to do that, but if you don't want to bother, then Mi 899 application already has pre-modified BIOS that would let you use Intel XTU to overclock your unlocked CPUs such as Intel Core i7 or 1650-1660 V3s. So, what is not working? Well, we have all the standard Chinese flaws such as sleep mode doesn't work, PC Express X1 slot does not have enough power to power my NVIDIA GT710, but if you would install there a Wi-Fi adapter, that shall work with no issues. Then restore and power loss function by default is hidden in the BIOS. I don't know why they decided to hide it in the BIOS options, I unlocked it and it works and XMP profile is not available in the BIOS, so if you would want to tune your memory, you would have to enter RAM timings manually, so that is available in the BIOS. Then I can also complain that the TPM 2.0 module is located way too close to the PC Express X4 slot, so with the some cards you will not be able to use both the PC Express X4 slot and the TPM 2.0 header unless you find some tiny TPM 2.0 module that will not go on the way uh, of the expansion card that you want to install in the X4 slot. If you plan to use a 28 piece Express Lane CPU such as i7-5820K or 6800K, then the PC Express routing is not as bad as I have seen with many other Chinese motherboards. You still get your fully functional PC Express X16 and X4 slots. In addition to that, the second M.2 slot also works, but unfortunately in this configuration the first M.2 slot will not work. It's not that big of a deal and routing is actually almost ideal, but still, if you're planning to use one of those limited CPUs, then you need to know that the first M.2 slot is not going to work. The BIOS on the motherboard is fully unlocked and you can read and write it with the FPT or Intel Flash Programming tool. For those who are using Intel Xeon V3 CPUs with a locked multiplier, such as 2690V3 or 2697V3, I have added Turbo Boost Unlocked BIOS mods to Mi 899 application, so you can flush that BIOS with just a few mouse clicks. 
Finally, let's talk about the VRM. Here we have a four-phase PWM controller with eight MOSFET pairs. So we have doublers for each phase and each phase gets four MOSFETs or two pairs. All in all, I could not find much specification on these particular MOSFETs, but under my testing with the EFI 2697 V3 Turbo Boost unlocked under ADA64 stress test, after half an hour I have measured the temps and maximum I was able to detect was actually on the back side of the motherboard and it was just under 80 degrees Celsius. So I could say that the VRM here is pretty decent, especially if you are not planning to torture the motherboard with the daily rendering or non-stop stress test. Now, with all that being said, shall you buy Machinist X99XD4 or just X99XD4? Well, that all depends on your needs and the price. If you need an X99 motherboard with full Windows 11 compatibility and uh, XD4 cost reasonably, then yes, at least my particular sample under my testing behaved really well. Sure, there are still some Chinese standard limitations, but all in all, we do not have any critical flaws. And I would actually pick X99 XD4 over my previous pick, which was Chiyida X99 H9S. XD4 is slightly larger, it comes with a bit more connectivity, and I just like it a bit better. No matter which of the motherboards you pick, please be aware that after you install your TPM 2.0 module, you will get issues with oversized graphics cards. The TPM 2.0 module would go in the way of 2.5 slot or 3 slot graphics cards and you would have to figure out how to solve that problem. Either you would have to find a tiny TPM module that is flat on the connector or you would have to cut some pieces of the GPU shroud to make it actually work. Both of the solutions are not ideal, so just be aware of this limitation and select your motherboard and your graphics card accordingly. For now, I'm going to try to figure out how to solve my particular issue with RTX 2060 Super not fitting onto this motherboard. But with that, I have to say thanks for watching, thanks for listening, I hope it was interesting and somehow useful. Bye for now and see you in the next videos.